Hello, my name is Igor Kushnirov and I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS. Customers often ask me, what is the difference between the two DDoS protection services, such as AWS Shield and AWS Shield Advanced? And here's the agenda for today. I'll start with talking about our perimeter protection portfolio that AWS Shield is part of. Then I'll focus on our managed DDoS protection services, AWS Shield, and its more advanced protection capabilities, AWS Shield Advanced. And at the end, I'll go over some of the best practices that we recommend to follow when you're building your architecture with DDoS resiliency in mind. So let's get started. Our perimeter protection portfolio consists of these three main services, AWS WAF or Web Application Firewall. It's meant to protect your HTTP application against layer seven attacks. And you can choose from AWS managed rules that are updated periodically and maintained by our threat research team or our partner rules, or you can build your own custom rules. And you can use AWS WAF console, API, or CLI to configure your policies and rules in AWS WAF. Now switching to AWS Shield Advanced Service, this is our managed DDoS protection service that I'll talk in more detail in a few moments. It's meant to protect your applications against DDoS attacks, and it provides protection from layer three to layer seven. It does leverage AWS WAF to give you protection against layer seven DDoS attacks. AWS Firewall Manager is there to improve your security posture and help you configure baseline rules that can propagate across multiple accounts within your AWS organization and apply protection to specific resource types that you include in your policy. You can also choose to automatically remediate when new resources are added and add, uh, add them un under the protection of, of, of the security policies, or you can choose to be notified if new resources are added and are not yet protected by the baseline policy. And now it's time to focus on our managed DDoS protection service. And before going into the details, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about shared responsibility model when it comes to security. Security is the top priority for AWS. And the way we think about it is that AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud, of its infrastructure and its managed services. And our customers are responsible for the security in the cloud. But we're there to provide a number of services and tools to help our customers to reach the security level that they're looking for. AWS Shield standard service is always running in the background. You don't need to subscribe to it. And it's there to assure the availability and protection of AWS infrastructure and its managed services. Most of the DDoS attacks are mitigated by AWS Shield standard service. I'd say 90 plus percent. But sometimes some of the attacks that are not impacting AWS infrastructure managed service availability, but it might impact the availability of your application. And that's where AWS Shield advanced protection comes in. It's there to, to cater DDoS protection for your specific application endpoints. And let me talk about very specific benefits that AWS Shield Advance can bring to you. If you look at the blue box in the slide, that's the protection that Shield Standard Service provides. Uh, it, it provides the protection from layer three to layer four uh, for most of the high volume attacks that are targeting AWS infrastructure and its managed services. When you subscribe your account to AWS Shield Advance and add some of the resources under protection, we start baselining your traffic and we understand the, the throughput capacity of the resources that you put under protection and we adjust the limits accordingly. And this way we can provide the mitigations against the attacks targeting those resources you put under protection much faster. You, you will also uh, be able to access additional metrics that will show you the details of the attack vectors that are targeting the resources that you're putting under protection. And all those metrics will be available in CloudWatch. We can also configure alarms to be notified if some of these attack vectors are targeting your resources. You also include a generic metric such as DDoS in progress. When we detect any, atta any DDoS attack pattern, we set this metric to one. And this way you can be just notified that there is a DDoS attack in general targeting your, your resources. But again, you can also subscribe to some very specific metrics. Uh, for example, if there's a UDP reflection attack and 
each one of those metrics will also contain a number of details about that attack vector. For example, the throughput volume, the packet per second volume, the number of requests, and so on, depending on the specific attack vector. You also get access to the DDoS threat environment dashboard that gives you the breakdown of the types of attacks and their volume happening on bi-weekly basis or on daily basis, and also the attack summary that are targeting the resources in your account. And one of the most important benefits is the access to 24-7 Shield Response Team. Shield Response Team is the same team that is protecting AWS infrastructure and its managed services, as well as Amazon.com. This team is dealing with DDoS attacks on a daily basis, and they do have a lot of experience. And they're there to help you uh, to get you back on your feet if your resources are targeted by, by, by DDoS attacks. Now, talking about adaptive protection. Sometimes attacks don't just happen once. They may happen, and then after uh, some pause, could be a few days, they can happen again. And what we do is when we detect this pattern, we apply the mitigations and we leave them there longer. So next time this attack pattern happens, we won't need to go through the mitigation. Um, at layer seven, we're monitoring your WAF logs and we're able to detect uh, if there's any deviation or anomaly detected, some type of traffic that, that doesn't correspond to your, to your normal daily, weekly, or monthly traffic. And we can notify you about this. And the way we do it is if you configure the proactive engagement and you configure the health checks, and we actually always recommend to configure health checks so that you uh, can determine what healthy application endpoint means for you. And when, when you configure those health checks, um, we'll be monitoring those health checks. And if we detect any anomaly um, or any 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 deviation from the pattern of your traffic that we're seeing normally, we will reach out to you before, before blocking that traffic. Because it could be that you might be scheduling some event today that we're not aware of. So it might not be a DDoS attack, it might be some major event. And we would like to confirm with you first. And if you confirm that you're not aware of any, any event or why the traffic in that volume might be coming from a certain geographical region, the shield response team will be there to help provide custom rules to make sure that only the, this malicious traffic will be blocked and your user traffic will be able to reach your application. Now talking about some of the financial benefits, when you put uh, resources under shield advanced protection, you can add, you can associate WAF WebAcle with those resources at no charge. So for example, if you choose to put Amazon CloudFront distribution or application load balancer under Shield Advanced Protection, you can associate WAF with those resources at no extra charge. The only exceptions are if you want to add partner rules to AWS WAF or use our bot control manage rule group. Those come at extra charge. Any other rules are included in the Shield Advanced pricing. If you choose to use Firewall Manager and configure the baseline rules, it also comes at no at no extra cost if you use Shield Advanced. And the last but not least, you also are eligible for our cost protection policy. If you're putting resources under protection and during the attack, those resources need to scale in order to absorb the, the attack traffic, you can apply for the reimbursement for those resources that uh, were, that those extra resources that, that were required during, during the mitigation of that DDoS attack. And now I'll talk about the resources that can be protected by Shield Advanced. You can choose from the global resources such as Amazon CloudFront, Amazon Route 53, or Global Accelerator Service, or regional resources such as Application Load Balancer, Classic Load Balancer, if you still happen to use one, or Elastic IP address. And Elastic IP can be used to protect your EC2 instances or Network Load Balancer. And now let's talk about some of the best practices when it comes to DDoS. And as I mentioned before, the main goal of the DDoS attack is to impact the availability of your application, impact its ability to serve content to your users. It's very important when you're building your architecture to make sure that it can scale and absorb the, the, the demands uh, of, the, uh, of the DDoS attack and that you have enough resources to also serve content to your users. 
So starting with the best practice number one, we always recommend to include Amazon CloudFront um, to protect your HTTP application. Amazon CloudFront is our global service and it's available in two, it, it's, it's deployed in 260 plus pops around the world. Uh, our DDoS mitigation equipment is actually deployed on the perimeter of our network and it's, it's located in, in every one of the Amazon CloudFront pops. You can benefit from the inline detection mitigation. This means you will incur almost no delay uh, when, when mitigating against DDoS attacks when you use Amazon CloudFront. We always recommend, as a best practice number two, to associate web application firewall web echo with your CloudFront distribution. This way you'll also get layer 7 DDoS protection. Now talking about Amazon Route 53, we consider it as one of the main services. It's like an entryway to your application. Users always need to resolve the domain name to get to your service. And that's why we actually provide 100% availability SLA on Route 53. Route 53 already gets uh, quite a comprehensive protection from AWS Shield standard service, but we still recommend to add Route 53 zones under protection. It comes at no extra cost and you'll benefit from additional metrics and also from the cost protection policy. If your Route 53 zone does get attacked, um, you can configure alarms to be notified about it and you can also apply for reimbursement for all those extra DNS requests um, that uh, you, you incurred during, during that attack. Now, switching to the regional uh, services, we always recommend uh, to uh, have your um, <coughs> compute instances, like EC2 instances, uh, in, in the auto-scaling group. And the reason is because when the attack happens, you want to be able to increase the number of instances to uh, absorb the attack and also be able to serve the traffic to your users. We also recommend to put an elastic load balancer in front of your auto scaling group. This way you can reduce the attack surface. The traffic will the, the attack traffic will first hit the, the load balancer that automatically can scale on demand. And it also helps with protection against layer four attacks like, like sin flood, for example. So it, it will kind of take the first hit before the attack traffic can reach your compute endpoints. And there is a lot more best practices available in our best practices for DDoS resilience guide. And you can follow the link here. Also, uh, I'm including another link uh, that provides all the steps that you need to follow in order to subscribe and add resources under protection of AWS Shield Advance. And as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. So talk to you soon and thank you.